Till now, we have seen how to define a stress state at a given point. Also, we have seen how to define state of strain at a given point. So, we have seen these two things. Now, I would like to introduce two important concepts that is hydrostatic and deuteric stress. So, we have this stress tensor which you have seen many times which has nine components and out of nine components these diagonal components represents a normal stress and this off, off diagonal or nine diagonal elements represents shear stresses. Out of these nine components only six components are independent. Why is that so? Because our stress tensor is symmetric and why our stress tensor becomes symmetric? Because we impose a condition of static equilibrium which makes these shear components to be equal. We have seen all these things. Now we can write this stress tensor in another way or I can say that this stress state in another way. In this fashion I can write this stress state where I have just diagonal elements and shear components are zero. Moreover, these diagonal components are equal. Another stress tensor where the shear components remains the same. So, you can see here the shear components which are non-diagonal elements which remains the same. However, the diagonal elements I subtract it with a term sigma m. So, this stress tensor I am dividing into two parts. First part is called as a hydrostatic stress state and the second part is called as a deuteric stress state. Here, this sigma m is called as mean normal stress or hydrostatic pressure or stress. The value of sigma m is sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3 upon 3 or in terms of principal stresses it is sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 upon 3. So, we have seen what is hydrostatic pressure earlier in our classes also. Now, we will see what are the implications of hydrostatic stress state and a deviated stress state. So, let us say I have a cube which is mentioned over here which is you can see it as an open cube, a big cube here and I apply a hydrostatic stress state here. So, that can be a pure tension or compression. So, here I have shown in a compressive way and under this influence of stress state that is an hydrostatic stress state, this volume of this big cube has shrunk. So, there is a change in volume here that is being involved and you can see one more thing here that the shape remains intact. There is a volume change but there is no shape change and that is what hydrostatic stress state does. So, there is an elastic volume change and there is no shape change. When I say elastic volume change that means when I remove this sigma m this will spring back to its original shape. So, that is why this hydrostatic stress state will not do any shape change but causes a volume change and thus it does not affect your yield strength. So, we have seen that there is an elastic volume change or volume change can occur during an elastic deformation and when this we have studied when we have dealt with stress state curves. So, let me write it down. The sigma m will not affect your sigma y which is yield stress or yielding it will not cause any effect. However, this will affect your epsilon f which is nothing but fracture strain. We will deal with this when we study fracture in detail in our course. So, hydrostatic stress state will not cause any yielding or plastic deformation whereas it can affect fracture strain. Write it here. So, now deuteric stress state you can see that the initial cube has changed its shape but there is no volume change here. So, deuteric stress state causes a shape change or a plastic deformation but there will not be any volume change this is what it is the hydrostatic state is not responsible for any plastic deformation whereas deuteric stress state causes plastic deformation. So, let me write it down here. So, sigma y that is yield stress will be affected by 
deuteric stress state that is sigma d here. Now if you look at this deuteric stress state carefully, you have shear stresses, you have shear stresses, you have normal stresses too. Presence of shear stresses will cause a wall plastic deformation or shape, shape change. Whereas here in this case you don't have any shear stresses and that is why there will not be any shape change because this normal stress which is equal that is sigma m will cause only normal stress and that will change the volume rather than causing any deformation. Now what I want you to do that you look this look at this deuteric stress state and find out what are the invariants which you get from this stress state. If you recollect what what were the invariants so we get three invariants that is j1 j2 and j3 so what is a invariant here j1 j1 is nothing but the trace of matrix that is the sum of the diagonal elements j2 is the summation of minor of diagonal elements and j3 is determinant of this state step so here i can say that j1 if you can do mathematics quickly you can find it out that J1 turns out to be 0. You can use this definition of sigma m and can clearly find out that J1 equal to 0. Now I want you to find out what is J2 and J3 for deuteric stress. With this I will stop here.